greet you this morning in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray, please. Father, today we are indeed grateful for a new day. We thank you, Lord, that it was in your divine will yeah. to wake us up this morning in our right minds. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, because it was in your divine will yes, to bring us safely into this sanctuary yes, and to allow those who have joined us online according to your will. I pray, mighty God, that as we go into your word, that you will take complete control. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, that as your word comes, Lord, you will send a special anointing yes, upon each one yes, yes, that is listening to your word. Yes, Lord. Your word says, God, that you watch over your word yes, to perform yes, it. Yes, and your word is already settled in heaven. Yes, so thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you for each one of us that is here today. And I thank you for what you will do in the lives of your children. I give you all the praise and all the glory. This vessel that is before you, Lord, just empty it. And allow it to do what you have called it to do. Allow it to be according to your will. And I ask all these things in the precious name of your only begotten Son, Yeshua Hamashiach. In his name I pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I first want to give honor to God. For his loving kindness to each and every one of us. I thank him for what he is doing. Because he is working. And he is speaking. Not every one of us might be hearing him. But he is speaking. And so I thank him for what he's doing. I thank him for giving us his only begotten son. Who made that sacrifice yes. to save us thank from you. our sins. And I thank him for his Holy Spirit. Who continues to stay with us. To be with us. To teach us. To guide us. Yes. I thank him for his Holy Spirit. To the pastors. The leaders of this congregation. I say God bless you. To our brothers and sisters in the Lord, I thank you for pressing on. And I pray God's blessings upon each and every one of you. To those who have joined us online, I pray the same blessings upon your lives. And I pray that God will touch you in a special way this morning. Because he is God Almighty. And to the visitors... I say the same. May God bless us tremendously today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our scripture today, as was read earlier, taken from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, is packed with so many different lessons that are significant, and important to all believers today. However, we will focus on the lesson of pressing on and staying the course, which means we must not give up. We must never give up. Stay on course and press on. In the same manner, the multitude pressed on in Jesus' day, we too need to press on today. And that is obvious because it, as we look around us, we can see what is happening in this world. 
And so it is important that we be focused yes. and press on. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. I believe this multitude that we read about was comprised of people from all different walks of life. But they had one thing in common. They were hungry to hear the word of God and to receive something. So they dropped everything else to follow Jesus and listen to his teaching. So may you also today receive something from the word, just as this multitude followed the Lord Amen. to receive from him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the word press indicates an action. Sorry about that. The word press indicates an action of pushing oneself forward. Forcing one's way into somewhere. Skillfully maneuvering oneself in order to make progress. Every move is done with calculation and daring determination towards a desired goal. That is what we do when we press in for something. So imagine yourself in this multitude. Besides hearing the word of God, what else would you be pressing for? Think about it. If you were at the lake of Genesaret on this particular day, and you found yourself in this multitude, what would you be pressing for? What would be the purpose for pressing towards the Lord? You can answer it to yourselves. Indeed, we want more than hearing the word. And I believe that there were many in this multitude who were sick and wanted healing. There were some who wanted peace of mind. Something that everyone wants these days. It's nothing new. It existed then and it exists now. Peace of mind. And then there were those who wanted deliverance from demonic attacks and the many strongholds in their lives. There were those who just wanted to be blessed with material things. There were those who were just curious. I really want to see what's happening here. I want to see what's going on. So they were following the Lord for many different reasons. Yeah. And I hope there were some who just wanted to repent and change their lives. Right. And the list could go on and on. But is there any difference with the wants and needs of this multitude and us today? Is there any difference? Don't we want and need the same things? But are we pressing in the same way in the kingdom of God? Or have we become complacent and ritualistic? Have we? Is it just a matter of coming into the house of God because I'm used to doing so? 
Is it just a matter of being ritualistic? It is expected of me. So when I get there, this is exactly what will happen. Yes. And the agenda remains the same. Mm. That is not pressing in. Mm. There is so much more to receive. So much more that we need today. Yeah. So are we as eager to hear, to learn, to understand, and apply the word of God in our lives today? Amen. Or has it become just a ritual? Think about it. We'll be thinking about a lot of things today, I can assure you. There are times when we will have to press on alone. Don't be disheartened when those times occur in our lives. Yes. Some personal journeys can be the most fulfilling yes. as we gain spiritual insight and strength that was only meant for us as an individual. Think of the woman with the issue of blood that is recorded in Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 22. And as the pastor said earlier, write these scriptures down so you can go back and check it out for yourselves. She didn't have a name. We don't even know what her name was, but she's recorded in history. Thank God. She had no one to press with her. It seemed like the entire community had turned its back on her. But she knew what she needed. Amen. And she was determined to press on to reach Christ. In her state of sickness, you would think that surely someone would be there to assist her. But no one was. However, she decided within her heart she would press on for her healing. And thank God she did because she received what she was pressing on for. Praise God. The Apostle Paul encourages us in this aspect of pressing on and he understood it clearly as he describes in Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 through 16 and it reads I press on that I may lay hold for which Christ Jesus laid hold of me I press toward the goal for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus Jesus. Are we pressing like the apostle is suggesting? Are we? And again, there are times when we need others to press with us. Those who are trustworthy and sincerely want to press with us. We need them. We need each other. Amen. As we travel on this journey, we need each other. Yes. This is what we found recorded about the paralytic man. This man could not even walk. He spent his days and his nights on a cot. He had to be carried everywhere. Everywhere he had to be carried. So he needed those to press on with him. His friends, his friends came to his aid to press on with him. They knew that if they could just reach Jesus, this man would have a chance. Amen. And it is the same for us today. 
if we could reach him, we have a chance for whatever it is we're pressing on for. So his friend said, okay, we will take you to him because we know you cannot go on your own. The friends took him on their way, but they were blocked at every entrance due to the crowd that was pressing on as well to Christ. Do you see how many people needed something yes. from the Lord? Yes. What a dismay. Sometimes we press on on our way too will become blocked. Yes. But does that mean we give up? No. No. Not at all. So I believe his loyal friends got together and said, it doesn't matter what it takes. We must get our friend before the Lord. And they came up with a plan. Now at this time Christ was in a house. And you would say what a daring plan. They decided they are going to climb the roof. Make a hole in somebody's roof. And let this man down. Directly in front of Christ. Now you know they would be left with an expense afterwards. <laughs> Probably even get in trouble with the law. Do we see how important it was for them to get their friend before Christ? Is it that important for us? Would we dare take chances to press on or to press with someone else that needs that? And so these loyal friends did exactly that. Got on somebody's roof, put a hole in there that was big enough to let that cut through, and lowered their friend directly in front of the Lord so he could receive. Their pressing resulted in his healing. You see, when we press with others, we must be in one accord. Amen. And the house of God is suffering terribly because we're not in one accord. Yes. Everybody is of their own mind. Yes. I say you must have the mind like he had. Yes. We cannot press on together if we're not in one accord yes. and of the same mind. Because pressing on involves a purpose, a plan, preparation, and then performance. I call them the four P's. You won't press on without a purpose. You must know what you're pressing on for. Look at the multitude. Every one of them had a want or a need. So they knew what they were pressing on for. Yeah. We can no longer come into the house of God and say, I am going just because it's Sunday. Right. Yes. Means you don't have a purpose right. for being in the house of God. Yes. I'm just going to go because my grandma did it. My mom did it. And they expect me to do it. And I'll tell my children it's okay to just go in the house of God on Sundays. That's the habit that we have yes. in the church. We're not pressing on. And so we're not receiving as the body of Christ. Amen. You know, it, it is so beautiful because God has left us examples yes. of having plans. Yes. You just look at the word and you see so many plans in there. Yes. It says that before the creation yes. God had a plan yes. hey, yes. for you and for me. Yes. Can you imagine? Yes. And then as he went on with that plan he looked down and he saw the evil 
and the wickedness of man. Yes. And he said, I'm going to call a people unto me yes. to carry my name and my word on this earth yes. that I created. Amen. And so he called Abraham yes. his plan. Yes. He called Abraham. He said, Abraham, get up yes. and move. All you have to do is be obedient. Yes. Because I am the one leading the way. Yes. And he's saying the same thing to us today. Yes. Do you hear him? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then as it went on, these people became slaves to another nation. And God had a plan again. Yes. I am going to free my people. Yes. And look at how he did it. He took a baby to bring this plan into fruition. Yes. A little baby that didn't know anything. And he put that baby on the river. Yes. Now. And he orchestrated everything that this baby would grow up in front of Pharaoh. Yes. In the palace of Pharaoh. Tell me, isn't my God great? Yes, he is. Tell me, isn't my God great? There is nothing that he cannot do. Hallelujah. And so he took this baby and watched over this baby until it was time to free his people. Yes, and you know by that time this baby had all the knowledge he needed yes, to do God's work yes. hallelujah. hallelujah and then he had a plan of salvation yes. for you and for me and we know that without this plan of salvation we don't have a hope of eternity right, amen. praise God so God is showing us that we need to work with a plan. Yes. We need to work with a purpose. Yes. And then we need to prepare yes, and then perform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go back to this lake of Genesaret where this multitude is. The scripture says, now as the multitude press on at the lake of Genesaret, Christ saw two fishermen boats. Now we know the story of the fishermen. They were out there all night, toiling all night and did not get a catch. Now that would be like working for an entire day and not get paid. Yes. Yes. And you know how that would make you feel. <laughs> but I admire these fishermen because as dull and hurt and tired and hungry as they may have felt, they didn't just sit down and mope. The scriptures tell us they started to wash their necks and getting it clean because they had hope and they were preparing for the next catch. It might not work out this time, but it must work out another time because of the hope in them. So these fishermen said, I'm not going to just sit down and have a pity party. I am going to prepare and make a plan. Jesus came by and he saw these two boats and he got into one that belonged to Simon Peter. Very interesting. However, when he did that, the fishermen were not there. They were washing their necks and probably mending their necks if there was any holes. But Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. You see, this was not the first time that he would encounter Simon Peter. Because if we go back 
to chapter 4, we would see that Jesus had already healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law. This is the reason Simon Peter could have said, according to your word, because he had already experienced the power of the word of God. Amen. So upon returning, the fisherman is now returning, Christ asked Simon Peter to push out a little from the land. Yes. Please note the progression that will take place. Push out just a little from the land so he could teach the multitude. And apparently Simon obeyed immediately without a comment or a question. Yes. Yes. When Christ had finished teaching, he said to Simon Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Who is he speaking to today? Who is he telling to launch out into the deep? Are you hearing that voice? Hmm. Hmm. But listen to Simon Peter's answer. Simon Peter said, Master, he knew that Christ was the master because his mother in law was well and hopping around and serving them back on her feet. Very good. So he knew that Christ was the master. But he said, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. In other words, do you understand what that is? Now Simon Peter is telling this to Christ. We have toiled out here all night. And you're telling us to go back out there again? But then he remembered his mother-in-law. That's how I put it. And he said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Nevertheless, at your word. You see, launching out in the deep is like stepping into the unknown. And everyone has this certain fear of the unknown and doubt of the unknown because we're thinking of stepping in there alone. But we need to trust the Lord. Amen. And we need to have faith because he constantly tells us do not fear. Yes. And he's saying that to us even now. When we look around at everything that is happening around us, he's saying do not fear. Yes. Do not fear. Trust in me. Trust in me. So Peter said, At your word, I will let down the net. This sudden shift is very important for us to understand. Notice everything else is the same except Christ now addresses one individual. Yes. See, he was addressing and teaching the entire multitude. They were by the lake. And he asked Peter, just push out a little. Notice the security that is there at the moment. I know every one of us here has been on the seaside, at the shore, and when you walk in the water, it feels so good on your feet, but it is so assuring because you feel the sand underneath your feet. And you know, 
It gives you a sense of security. I don't have to worry about this. Oh, thank God. Because the waves know where to come and stop and go back. Even the waves are obedient. Yeah. More obedient than us yeah. sometimes. But when you think about launching into the deep, especially if you're not a swimmer, you will think twice. Whatever is taking you out there, you must have confidence. In that vessel. Amen. Because the first thing comes to your mind. I do not know how to swim. Yep. Can't drink all and this is the deep. <laughs> I will not touch the sand. <laughs> if I put my foot there. Yeah. Mm. But Christ gives a command. Yes. Launch out into the deep for a catch. Now if you've been out all night and you didn't catch anything and the Lord comes to you and say go up there in the deep for a catch. He's given the entire story. He said you go take your nets, put it down there and you will get a catch. Isn't that what they've been out there for all night? For a catch? And now they hear the words of God and they're hesitant. We agree, huh? But aren't we the same way? So many times. Aren't we the same way? The Lord might say to us, do this and do that. But then we come up with a lot of reasons yes. why we think this will not work. Yes. And I don't think this is the best way to do it. Yes. And so, Lord, I have to think about it. Yes. Or I have to pray about this one. Yes. Because I'm not sure. We make an argument. Yes. A whole story. Yes. Just to not be Amen. obedient. Yes, yes. yes. Amen. yes. yes. So Simon has his own response according to his experience. Look at his hesitancy. Is he trying to explain to the Lord why his command may not be such a good advice? We do the same thing. We do it over and over and over. And then we wonder why we're not receiving. Yes. We wonder why we spend so many hours praying yes. when sometimes God already gave you the answer. Yes. Obedience. We wonder why Obedience. we sit and we fast and we fast yes. and we pray because we believe that there are some things that can only be done through prayer and fasting. Yes. And yes, it is true. But are we obeying? Oh. And are we hearing his voice? Yes. We do the same thing yes. as he was. But thank God, he catches himself in time and decide to obey. Yes. Amen. 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 Church, the Lord speaks to us. Collectively, yes. all together, yes. and individually, yes. as we see in the text. He spoke to the multitude while sitting in Simon Peter's boat, yes. close to the shore. Because that multitude was ready for whatever comes close to the shore. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But as he spoke to Simon Peter, he changes the location. Yes. Whatever Simon Peter is experiencing is not sure stuff. Yes. We're going deeper. Yes. Launch out into the deep. Yes. 
In other words, what you're about to experience only happens in the deep. Get to moving. You can no longer be stationary. Get into action. Launch out into the deep. Is he saying that to someone here today? Yeah. Is he about to change your spiritual location? Yes. And take you deeper into his word. So what if you have spent all night toiling and caught nothing? I, the Christ, am here with you now. This is your moment. I am here with you right now. This is your time of visitation. Yes. Do you know how many believers miss the time of their visitation? Oh, how sad. Yeah. Jerusalem also did. Yes. And Christ wept. Yes. Do you see how sorry his heart gets yeah. when we miss yes. our visitation? Yes. And all those that are his, the word tells us he appears to those that are his. Yes. Amen. Do not miss that visitation. Amen. It's one of the most important moments of your life. Yes. Amen. Hmm. So he tells Peter, I'm right here with you now, this very moment. I'm telling you where to go yes. and what to do yes. to get what you need. Yes. Amen. And here you are trying to explain to me yes. something I already know. Yes. Oh, Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't that what we do all the time? Yes. Yes. Amen. Have we forgotten who Christ oh, is yes. and who the Lord is? Yes. How can we tell him something he already knows? Yeah. Right. Who do you think created the fish and the ocean and the deep? All right. Do you know that while I was teaching the multitude, I was also commanding the fish to come out here in the deep just for you? Yes. Oh, thank you Lord. Do you know what he is doing right now? Just for you. Amen. To meet that need that you have constantly been lifted up to him. Has he also given you an answer? Mm. That you completely missed. The time of your visitation. You were not ready. Yes. You did not make preparation, one of our P's, yes. to receive from him. Let us not be missing so much, yes. church. Yes. Do not miss the time yes. of his visitation. So Simon Peter had quite a life-changing experience in the deep. Quite a life changing experience in the deep. You know, when we hear the word of God and we repent and we come to him, it is just the beginning yes. of the walk with him. But so often we come and we receive him and we receive the, the word and that's about it. We become a member of the church and we do what the church is expecting of us 
and some. We also do what the church is not expecting yes. of us. Yes. And then we stunt our spiritual growth. Yes. We have to remain on the shore because we're not ready to launch out into the deep. That's not the will of God. That is not the will of God for his children. Yes. And believe me, believe me, the time is coming and is coming swiftly upon yes. us. Yes. When if you're not ready to launch out into the deep, you will face problems. Yes. You could have been coming to church all of your life, yes. but you have not reached Amen. that place yes. to launch out into the deep. Yes. So there's work to do. There's work to do. The same things that Christ taught, the experiences yes. that God gives to us, many of these things are taking place in the deep. Yes. Where your spiritual man becomes the main thing and the main person that receives. Yes. You start to lay the flesh down. Yes, the flesh is not important in the deep. It is the spirit. Yes. And your spirit communicates with the spirit of God. Yes. He directs our path. He tells us when to move and when to stop. Yes, yes, yes. That is his assignment from the Father. Yes, yes. But one day he will be gone. Yes. That's what the word tells us. Yes, oh Lord, Mercy. we must pity those yes. who does, do not know him yes. when he's taken. Yes. This is the reason we have work to do. Yes. This is the reason we must teach the word of God as he gives it to us. Yes. Many times we try to leave certain things aside yes. and not deal with the truth of the word. And so a lot of believers have missed the point and they have not grown. They have not grown. And the Lord is on his way. Yes, yes. Do you know how he feels? He says, are you ready for your visitation? So I can come to you and reveal to you the things that you ought to know to make it in these times. Yes. We see how the times are changing yes. around us. Survive. We must know how to survive. Yes. There's too many believers who are panicking over this and panicking over that. That is not for the child of God. And if you have been out in the deep, you will know that God is going to keep his word with us. So there we have to be like Peter. Nevertheless, according to your word, so will it be. Peter received a life changing experience and that is what God wants for us he came face to face with God's divine presence and God's divine power have you come face to face with God's divine presence mm. have you come face to face with God's divine power Or are we afraid to launch out into the deep? Help us, Lord. Help us. You see, when you are out in the deep with the Lord, if it's according to his will, he gives you dreams. He gives you visions. You can tell what will happen? Yes. 
Because it comes directly from him. He shows you open heavens. Do you think it's only Stephen that will see open heavens? God is showing his children open heavens. But you have to have that faith. You have to have that trust to see open heavens. He's not withholding it. From us, Stephen was a man just like us. Yes. But he was filled the with the Spirit. Yes. Yes. So John received an entire revelation of what was, what is, and what is to come. Yes. Amen. He was in spirit. Yes. That is where he's calling us. That was his intention. That we be more spirit than flesh. Amen. And if we are to be more spirit than flesh, we would not face a lot of things we're facing. Yes. We would not be going through yes. a whole lot of things we're going through. Yes. But we're too much in love with the flesh. Yes. And that is the end result of flesh. Yes. As a child of God, we're supposed to be spiritual beings. Yes, amen. More spirit than flesh. So that we can see and communicate with him in the spirit. Yes. But no, for most of us, we have laid the spirit man down. Yes. And we're running around and up and down. Yes. In the things of the flesh and material things. Take a look at what is happening around us. Yes. To the material things. Yes. And to the things of the flesh. Take a look. Yes. Only the things of the spirit will survive. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We need an experience. Like Simon Peter. We need for God to take us out into the deep where there's no bottom for you to feel. Yes. You can't feel the bottom That's of right. the deep. Yeah. You must trust him here yes. to keep you, yes. to hold you. Yes, yes. yes. we must. Yes. Many of us won't get there because we're still in too much flesh. Yes. And we're afraid. Yes. I'm going to take the chance. Uh -uh, not me. I'm going to stay in church and pray. Yes. We'll stay in church and pray. And miss out many things that he wants for you to have. Yes. Too many of us are not living that abundant life that he promised. And that abundant life is for here. Are we hearing the voice of the Spirit? Yes, Lord. See, it's the enemy yes. that has pulled us away yes. from what God intended for us. Yes. And he continues to do so because we allow him to. Yes. We let the enemy get into our lives and create a havoc. Yes. And then we can't Fix it. Yes. Because we're in the flesh. Yes. And so we start to run up and down. And we need to press on and press in to the deep. But we're not even strong enough to do that. And God is reminding us. He said, I sent my son. I gave you my Holy Spirit. Yes. What else do you need to be triumphant? Yes. What else do you need to be victorious? We need more faith. We need more faith. We're not at that faith level yet yes. to launch out into the deep. We need more faith. So that you can stand... 
before a mountain. Yes. And I'm not referring to the physical mountain. Yes. But even so be it if it is. Yes. But you can stand in front of a mountain. Yes. And say remove. Yes. See, what God has given to us, we have not even touched a surface. And this is the reason we wonder why is the church not like the first church? Where is this power that he has given to us? If we're dabbling and running around and playing with flesh, you don't have spiritual power. The church has no spiritual power. Hey! And it's not the will of God. It is not his will. And he's calling his children. Do you hear the call? Do we hear the call? Do we have a plan? Or are we going to sit in our old ways because that is how we do things? Hey! We'll never receive. And never experience the full totality of God's ways and God's words and God's power in the life. Remember Simon Peter. Oh, but we toil all night. The Lord is saying, I am speaking to you now. I am not talking about last night. I was not there with you. You were out there by yourself. And even the fish understood that they shouldn't be around you. You didn't catch not one of them. <laughs> it is serious, saints. I'm not here to give you jokes. No, that's not me. In the, even the fish. So he could say, I was over there with the multitude. And I was healing them. Yes. I was teaching them. Yes. But I was also commanding those fish and tell them, get back out there in the deep. Yes. Because I'm on my way. Yes. And they listen. Yes. Like I say, nature creation. Listen yes. more than us. Yes. What is wrong with us? May God help us. Help us, Lord. We need that change in experience. And we will only get it if we dare to launch into the deep. The deep. And not only did Simon Peter receive what he wanted, he got more than what he wanted. Yes. He received more because he came face to face with God's divine presence and his power. It left him in awe. He was bewildered, amazed, and fearful all at the same time. Yes. He fell down at Jesus' knees and he cried out. Yes. And what did he cry out? He didn't say, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm sorry. He said, depart from me. Yes. I am too sinful. Yes. I am a no good person. Yes. To even answer you the way I did. To even be so obedient. Lord, leave me. So I could deal with me. See, Peter realized his frailty. Yes. And his ineptness yes. of his human nature. Yes. It made him feel unworthy. Yes. Unworthy. Yes. But a loving Savior yes. 
and thank God for his everlasting Amen. love. Hallelujah. Thank God for his everlasting Amen. love. Yes, as many times as we abuse it, yes, thank Lord. him for his Amen. everlasting love. Yes, the Lord calmed Simon Peter in his frightful state, yes. telling him, do not be afraid. Yes. He's telling us the same thing today. Because fear is a spirit. Yes. It is a spirit. And it does not come from him. God. So when you feel yourself being fearful. Tell yourself. Be like David. Encourage yourself. Yes. Speak to yourself. Yes. Instead, we're calling deacon, we're calling deaconesses, we're yes. calling everybody. But Put the word inside of you yes. so that when you need it, you can get it outside of you. And I'm not saying that we don't need people to press with us and press through. But we need to show growth in the Lord. We just cannot be coming into the house of God every day, every weekend, and yes. not growing spiritually. Yes. We have to grow spiritually yes. to get this inside of us. Yes. We are in a battle, yes. and we're not wrestling with flesh and blood. Yes. Our weapons are not the same. You have to know what your weapon is and you have to know how to use it. Amen. And so many of us can say, I know what my weapon is, but can't use it. So what is the purpose? Do not be afraid. Because he says, from now on, Simon, Peter, you are going to catch men. Can he have that amount of confidence in us and tell us? Has he told you that you are going to catch men? Or have you told you that you are going to catch men? There is a big difference in it. A big difference. Yes. Because when we tell us that we are going to catch men, yeah. we catch men according to our ways yes. and how we think yes. we should catch men, right. not according to his ways. And I personally think that that is why the church is the way it is today, yes. powerless. Yes. His spirit doesn't move. Because we've got it all wrong. And there's a loving God who is just waiting for us to get it right. He said, on the day of my visitation, be ready. I'm coming to show myself to you. And that coming is real. When he shows himself to you, it is real. Believe me, you're not the same person. It would take days for you to come back to who you know yourself to be. And God still give those experiences to his people. That is the God that we serve. And he wants us to know him in a special way that we will have absolutely no doubt. So that any mountain that appears before you, yeah. you can speak to it. Yeah. You see, when you speak to your mountains, you're not just speaking regular words. Yeah. Hey, you're speaking spirit. Yes. Remember what Christ said? The words I speak to you are spirit. Amen. And they are life. Yes. Are your words spirit yes. when you speak? And are they life? Hey! Mm. Mm. Do not be afraid, saints. That spirit of fear is dangerous. It can take a hold of you and 
finish you when you submit yes. to that spirit of fear. Yes. And God has not given you that spirit. So as Christ walked on the earth, he was constantly telling people, do not be afraid. That is what the enemy uses on us. Because he knows that we are afraid. He knows that we have doubts. And that we are afraid. And we always forget that God has given us power, authority, and dominion over all the works of the enemy. And the enemy say, yes. Yes. But I'm happy that you don't even remember that. Because you never remind me. And so I'm going to use my power on you. You don't even know what you have. So I can come at you and put you in bondage and fear. And then we run into his house on Sundays and we dance and we praise and we clap our hands. But we're living in bondage. Recall the song of our sister, I am free. I am free. And that is what Christ have done in our lives. Free us. But so many times we turn right back. Ooh, I don't like this freedom thing. I don't like to be free like this because I can't do this and I can't go here and I can't. Who says you have not really launched into the deep to experience the things of the spirit? And if you should ever get there and experience that, you will never want to go back to where you were. You will never want to go back to the things you used to do. Hallelujah. God is calling you to this place. Get in the deep. Hallelujah. Get in the deep. So many times we miss our blessings. Because we're not ready for his visitation. We don't understand the call. And we're not obedient. We become complacent and satisfied with whatever. And never truly grow into the person God wants us to be. Never truly experience the power of his kingdom on earth. Who is he calling into the deep today? Into the deeper things of God. Into the mysteries of his kingdom. To do his work in these perilous times. When he calls you, do not be afraid. Because his hand of protection will be upon you. His hand of protection is always on us because we are his. Yes. Do you know the amount of dangers that are in the street and yet he brought you safely here? Yeah. And he'll take you safely home. Yes. Do you know the evil that's rampant at night you laying in your bed asleep? His hand of protection yes. is upon you. Yes. Do not change course. Yes. Press on and do not give up. Do not give up because the enemy loves to see when we're in misery and we cry and I've been praying about this for so long and I don't know. The enemy loves that. Yes. He say, look at them. They don't even know that they have power and dominion over me and my works. Yes. Do not be afraid because his hand of protection is upon you. Amen. Do not change course. Go where he tells you to. Yes. Because he knows what is best for you. Yes. If he say, I want you to come into the deep, 
Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Trust in him. Yes, but we cannot say that if we don't truly yes. trust him. Yes. See, we are thinking of the natural deep. Yes. That blue or green ocean where if no matter how far I put down my feet, I can't feel the no earth on. underneath of it. That's that's the first thing that we're thinking about. Yes. But we're talking about the death of his spirit. Yes. Spiritual experiences yes. that God wants us to know. Yes. That he actually created us for. And we've just missed it all. Yes. Because we keep playing around with the enemy. Yes. So go where he tells you to. Our blessings will only come through our obedience. That's right. Do not be in a hurry. Your time is coming. Do not be in a hurry. Your time is coming. You know, sometimes we come to the Lord and we are not ready. This is a growing experience. We want to come yesterday and by today, we think we can be the pastor. Yes. Or the deacon. Yes. Or the deaconess or the elder. Yes. We think. Yes. Yes, may God help us. Do not be in a hurry. Because God will teach you through his Holy Spirit. And if it is his will, he will test you. And he knows. But when he calls you into the deep and you walk out there with him, trust in him. Believe me, you can be like the Apostle Paul where Amen. he took him to the third heaven. Yeah. Thank you, and Apostle Lord. Paul says, Ooh, the things I saw yes. and the things I heard, yes. I cannot yes. come back down to this earth That's and even true. tell you. Yes. It is reserved yes. for you. Yeah. So you press your way in there Amen. so you can receive. Yes. Yes. Do not give up. You could be next in line for your visitation and for your blessing. Just trust and wait on the Lord. Amen. I hope you receive from the word today. And I pray that God will continue to minister unto each and every one of us. I'm going to call the deacon right now. May God continue to bless. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Rose. And you first said there's a lot of lessons and teaching in this, and yes. she is right. Yes. Nevertheless, yes. are you in the press in the name of Jesus? Yes. Hallelujah. Stay in the press. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Rose. What a powerful message. For those on Facebook, and YouTube, if you are listening to this message and you're moved by the message and you want to receive Jesus as your Savior or you're in a backslidden state, those on Facebook I want you, and YouTube, I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I know that I am a sinner. I believe you sent your son Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, Come into my heart and save me now. Satan, I denounce you, your demons on assignment against me, and every demonic spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you said that and you meant it, welcome to the family of God. And if you're ever in the area, 1672 West Jefferson Boulevard, come and be a part of our service in the name of Jesus. And or, if you need the right hand of fellowship to join the church, the door stands open in the name of Jesus. Now for those who are here in the sanctuary, if you want to receive Jesus as your Savior and need prayer, the workers will be here and will be here to help and to pray. It says in James 5, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders and anoint them with oil, and the prayer of faith shall heal them. You said in 1 John 4 and 7, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God.
He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Share some love this week. Go with God and go in peace. Amen. Amen.